In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good morning and welcome to our service here at St. Philip and St. James Church in Alderley Edge. Today is the first Sunday of Epiphany, and it's the Sunday when the church has traditionally celebrated the baptism of Christ. The baptism of Christ marks the beginning of the ministry of Jesus uh, on earth. And it, we also recall in his baptism, our own baptism, which marks the first steps that we took following in the footsteps of Christ. And so we reflect on our past discipleship and also our discipleship in the future. If you're joining us on Facebook, you're very welcome. If you're looking for the service on YouTube, you will not have found it live, and uh, I apologize for that um, now. Um, we, we hope to address these technical difficulties in the coming days so that we can all join together at the same time and worship at our usual starting time of 10 o'clock. We're going to begin our service now with a hymn. I heard the voice of Jesus say. <laughs> Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. Let us confess our sins. God be gracious to us and bless us, and make your face shine upon us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May your ways be known on the earth, 
your saving power among the nations. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You, Lord, have made known your salvation and revealed your justice in the sight of the nations. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Eternal Father, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your Son, anointing him with the Holy Spirit, grant to us who are born again by water and the Spirit, that we may be faithful to our calling as your adopted children, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You please be seated for our first meeting. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the inland regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, into what were you baptized? They answered, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied, Altogether, there were about 12 of them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The next hymn is hymn number 123, Come Holy Ghost, Our Hearts Inspire. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ was revealed in flesh, proclaimed among the nations and believed in throughout the world. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. This is the gospel of the Lord. Lord, take my words and speak through them. Take our minds and think through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire with love for you. Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the River Jordan. Time does funny things in the church. Seems like only last week we were in Bethlehem with the wise men kneeling at the feet of the baby Jesus. And now here we are by the River Jordan and Jesus is grown up. He's 30 years old. He's coming to be baptized. What's going on? What are we doing here? Well, I think what ties those two scenes together is that both are moments of epiphany, 
of revelation. They're both, if you like, transformation scenes. They reveal the truth about Jesus and they reveal God's glory in the world. You know, in the pantomime of Cinderella, where Cinderella's pumpkin is transformed into a coach, of horse, coach and horses and her rags into a gorgeous ball gown. Well, this is that kind of transformation scene, only it points to a transformation that doesn't disappear at the stroke of midnight. So here we are on the banks of the River Jordan, listening to the hairy man in the camel's hair coat. Why have we come? What's drawing us here? Well, it's really the offer of forgiveness that John is holding out, a new start, the chance to wipe the slate clean, washing away all the dust and sweat and starting anew, coming up from the water like newborn babies ready to start a new life. And that sounds pretty good. I remember vividly when we were on pilgrimage in the Holy Land only four years ago, standing with crowds of pilgrims on the banks of the River Jordan, getting ready to dip our toes nervously in the river and splash ourselves with water as a solemn reminder of our baptism. But John wasn't offering a paddle and a splash. He was offering total immersion. You had to take off your clothes and get properly wet like some of the other pilgrim groups that we saw walking right into the water with white robes on. I think they had swimsuits on underneath. They were getting properly baptized. That takes a bit more courage, especially the bit where you have to hold your nose and get dipped right under the water. One of the things I'm missing in this time of lockdown, and I've been missing it for a couple of years because I was ill the previous summer, Amid all the other things I miss, but one of the things I really miss is swimming. I used to like going to my local pool once a week for a swim, getting thoroughly wet all over. Somehow swimming reaches the parts that other forms of exercise can't. But there was always a moment, especially on a cold, wet winter day, when I'd hesitate before taking the plunge. Even going into the changing rooms and getting undressed makes me feel shivery just to think about it. There has to be that moment of letting go before you can take the plunge, a surrendering of control before you feel the water supporting you and buoying you up. Sam Wells points out that clothes, which we take off when we go swimming, provide not just warmth, but pockets. They give us a place to keep the things we need, the things that help us keep control of our lives, like keys and wallets and phone. Clothes give us some control over how we look too. We choose our clothes to cover our deficiencies, to help us project the kind of person we want people to see when they look at us. So taking off our clothes means taking off our shell taking off the protective shield we keep between us and the world. So that action of stepping into the waters of baptism takes courage. It means letting go of our illusions, our masks, coming before God with all our deficiencies, revealing the inner self that we hide from everyone else. It sounds quite scary. But when Jesus steps into the River Jordan, something different happens. Jesus doesn't have to cover up who he really is before God because he is totally himself through and through all the time. Jesus doesn't wear disguises. So what is revealed when Jesus steps into the water is who Jesus really is. That heavenly voice comes from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. God's beloved son in whom God delights. And we get a glimpse too, just a wing beat flashing in the sun of the presence of God's Holy Spirit. He saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove. The spirit descending and remaining with Jesus. So his baptism is his anointing as God's chosen one the beginning of his ministry on earth. 
For most of us, I guess, baptism is something that happened to us, if it's happened at all, when we were babies. We didn't have much choice in the matter and we probably don't remember it. But I did once have the privilege of baptizing a family of three who'd been adopted, including one little lad who was five or six at the time of his baptism. Some of you will know who I'm talking about. And it made a huge impression on that little lad. I know because when he came back for confirmation in his teens, I asked him to draw a timeline of his life to date and what he hoped to be. No guesses, by the way, for what he wrote down for that. And he said, is it OK if I start with when I was baptised? Because that's when I knew I was a child of God. That's when my life really began. Wow. You see, baptism for us as Christians is more than the baptism that John offered. Good as that was. John was a messenger sent by God to offer a baptism of repentance and cleansing, a baptism of letting go the past, peeling off the layers of illusion, stepping down into the water, letting God wash away all the dust and stains. That's an amazing gift, a gift from God that we come back for time and again. That's why most of our services start with words of penitence, because we continually need to do that, to let go, to say sorry, and we continually need to hear God's words of forgiveness. But that isn't where it stops. John also came to point forward to Jesus' baptism, the baptism of the Spirit. Jesus baptized with water to wash away our sins and with the Spirit. And in Jesus' baptism, we are invited to share in Jesus' own baptism dying to the false self, letting go of illusions, stepping into that reality that was perfectly embodied in Jesus, the reality that is offered to us by the grace of God, the very blessing and the very spirit that he received. In so far as we are in Christ, we are God's beloved children. You are God's beloved son, God's beloved daughter. We are anointed with the Holy Spirit, the infinite love of God takes delight in us. So that's why we need to keep being reminded of our own baptism. Keep being invited to take the plunge, to experience anew the fullness of total immersion in the riches of the love and grace that God wants to pour upon us. So let me just finish with a prayer a prayer that expresses the fullness of Jesus' baptism. May God forgive us, may Christ renew us in his image, and may the Spirit enable us to grow in love. And may God transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of his grace, and in the renewal of our lives make known his heavenly glory. Amen. In baptism, God calls us out of darkness into his marvellous light. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life with him. Therefore, I ask, do you reject the devil and all rebellion against God? I reject them. Do you renounce the deceit and corruption of evil? I renounce them. Do you repent of the sins that separate us from God and neighbour? I repent of them. Do you turn to Christ as Saviour? I return to Christ. Do you submit to Christ as Lord? I submit to Christ. Do you come to Christ 
the way, the truth, and the life. I have come to Christ. Brothers and sisters, I ask you to profess the faith of the church. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, God Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in His Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the world, and the life of the world. Amen. God of grace and life, in your love you have given us a place among your people. Keep us faithful to our baptism and prepare us for the glorious day when the whole creation will be made perfect in your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. As we celebrate the baptism of Christ, we make a quiet space for him now. For as the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus like a dove when he arose from the water of his baptism by John the Baptist, we take time to feel the Holy Spirit moving within us, uniting us with love, love for each other, love for the Lord, love for the whole of the human race, and love for the world. We ask for help, Lord, for all our ministry team, that they remain strong and well and continue to bring support and hope to our community. Please bless their mission in bringing your love to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Please, Lord, fill your churches around the world with your Holy Spirit. And like Paul, who spoke at Tyrannus every day for two years, give them the fortitude to bring peace, love and understanding to all in these difficult times. Baptising with water and the Holy Spirit and uniting us all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask for patience and wisdom for the children in our community and for your guiding hand in the work of the teachers and staff. May the teaching staff be inspired, like Paul and John the Baptist, to bring their messages to their flocks and enable them to feel rewarded for their efforts. May the children live with hope to build their lives on and not with fear, feel courage and not defeat, live in the light of happiness and not the dark of sadness. Please bless all those who could continue to go out to work in challenging environments. We ask you to keep them safe. And please let the homeless be given safe shelter and the hungry and thirsty food and drink. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring to you the leaders of all the nations and throughout the nations as they struggle with managing the disease spread in their economies. Please give them inspiration in their decision-making and where they face natural disasters, let them find help for their people. We also remember the Queen and Prince Philip in this changed time and ask for their well-being. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Please, Lord, be with the sick in their hour of need and their carers. Please bring healing and hope to all who suffer in mind, body, and soul. To those recovering from the virus, 
those who think they may have infected others, and those especially challenged at these times. Please help all those who cannot get the surgery and treatment they need. And we especially pray for our loved ones, Judith Knapper, Rebecca Walker, Penny Robinson, Linda Stockton, Andrew Ward, Audrey Phillips, Ernie Ray, and Mark Beardsall. And for anyone known to us in this quiet moment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, please let those that have made the journey to you be filled with your everlasting peace and love, eternally comforted. We especially pray for Michelle Mullane and Margaret Bales and anyone known to us in this peaceful time. We give thanks for their lives and we pray that their families and friends find the peace and comfort of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We give you thanks, Lord, for the blessings of the Holy Spirit. We rejoice in your comfort. We give thanks for the vaccine developers. And we rejoice in the beauty and wonder of your awesome world. Merciful Father, accept these, these prayers, prayers for the, the sake of your Son, our, our Saviour, Saviour, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. you please stand? Our Saviour Christ is the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there shall be no end. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And all that is with you. Let us offer one another now a sign of peace. Our next hymn is Songs of Thankfulness and Praise.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. In your loving care, you spread before us the table of life and give us the cup of salvation to drink. Keep us always in the fold of our Saviour and our Shepherd, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed, Blessed be Lord. Lord. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All honour and praise be yours always and everywhere, mighty creator, ever-living God. Through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For at this time we celebrate your glory made present in our midst. In the coming of the Magi, the King of all the world was revealed to the nations. In the waters of baptism, Jesus was revealed as the Christ, the Saviour sent to redeem us. In the water made wine, the new creation was revealed at the wedding feast. Poverty was turned to riches, sorrow into joy, and therefore with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. To you, to you glory, glory and praise forever. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. To you be glory and praise forever. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever.
our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God here among us, Light in the midst of us, bring us to light and love. Christ is the true bread which has come down from heaven. Lord, give us this bread always. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Christ is the true bread which has come down from heaven.
Lord of all time and eternity, you opened the heavens and revealed yourself as Father in the baptism of Jesus, your beloved Son. By the power of your Spirit, complete the heavenly work of our rebirth through the waters of the new creation, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Our final hymn is now let us from the table rise. Thank you very much for joining us this morning and I'm sorry about the technical difficulties that we've uh, had. Um, one of the things that uh, we hope to do after this service was invite you to share a cup of coffee with us and possibly a biscuit 
over Zoom. And we've sent out a Zoom link uh, for you to click on if you would like to do that. Now, I've got a horrible feeling that that Zoom link isn't going to work. And we're going to have to send out a new Zoom link. And I think that's going to have to be either Love Day or possibly Sue, who's going to be hosting that Zoom link and sending it out uh, by email to the congregation. This will take us a few minutes. So coffee morning is not going to start at bang on 11 o'clock, but a few minutes after 11, I think, using a new Zoom link. So we come to our blessing. Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Proclaim the word made flesh. Glory, Glory thanks, and praise to May I have my brother to your left? Yes. You're right. Still live. 